absolutely no ET craft, ET technology, anything like that at Area 51. This is why S-4 was made specifically to separate it there. People at Area 51 do not have the clearance. I had Majestic Clearance. Majestic Clearance was designated as uh, clearance 38 levels above Q Clearance, and Q Clearance is the civilian uh, top secret clearance. I was put into the briefing room with uh, 121 or 22 briefings and really was just told to sit and read through them. I think they were there just to mainly educate me on, on what was going on. They weren't a complete in in-depth explanation on everything else, but just uh, essentially a brief synopsis on some of the other projects that were going on there. Supposedly, the information, now this isn't something that I determined, it's something I was told, that uh, the crafts originated from uh, a planet that orbited the Zeta Reticuli star system, Zeta Reticuli 1 and Zeta Reticuli 2, or two, two stars of a binary star system. Uh, the craft allegedly came from there. One or two autopsy photographs I saw uh, dealt with just a small photograph, a bus shot essentially, just head, shoulders, and chest of an alien where the uh, uh, chest was cut open in T-fashion and one single organ was removed. I would imagine it was three and a half or four feet tall. Allegedly, what happened in 79, there was some sort of information exchange going on where there were actual live aliens at the facility. And at one particular point, there was an area where some security personnel went to enter. And apparently, because not the sidearms, but the bullets in the sidearms, from what I understand, if they would have entered the area, the bullets would have detonated. Uh, and supposedly one of the creatures tried to stop the security personnel from entering the area and a fight ensued. And the bottom line from the altercation was that the uh, security personnel, I don't remember how many were involved, but were all killed and they died of head wounds. And that's all that, all that I heard of that story. It never even occurred to me, even though I was looking at an extraterrestrial vehicle, that you know, this wasn't man-made. It probably really hit me when I got inside the craft and looked around and began to understand how the craft was operated and finally grasped the whole project as a whole, as what we were doing, the fact that we weren't building this thing. We were trying to find out how it was made. We were back engineering it. The craft generates its own gravitational field. It produces a gravity wave, which is similar to the gravity wave that the Earth produces. Space-time and gravity are all essentially interrelated. Gravity distorts time and space, so really nothing is going to influence you while you're in there. It also slows down time. These things aren't theories, we know them to be true. I only witnessed one test flight up close, officially. The test flight schedules were told to me, uh, specifically because I was probably going to have to be present. This craft was about 52 feet in diameter. I don't know exactly how much it weighed, but it weighed a lot. And uh, this was quite, quite a scientific feat, to lift something completely silently, under control, and uh, you know, perform a maneuver like that. The test flights I saw at the base, actually the, the best test flight was witnessed by my friends who I had brought out there. The craft was uh, similar to what was done before that I had seen close up, other than the fact that it went above the mountain range, uh, moved a, a much greater distance at a much higher rate of speed. How are my opinions changed? Uh, I would say considerably. Before I was at S4, I was more or less one of the uh, one of the guys that thought, you know, all these government conspiracy and UFO buffs and things like that were complete lunatics. Um, I even remember before I was involved there, a friend showed me a little newspaper clipping and said, 
John Lear was giving a lecture who was uh, touting that aliens from another world came to Earth and there's 70 different species. And I remember laughing on the phone that this guy had lost his mind. And uh, I was also under the impression that, you know, boy, the government's all for the people and they, you know, you know, they're out here to protect us and all that. And, you know, after the experiences I had there, uh, everything is completely turned around. You know, the, the government <laughs> is doing everything but uh, looking out for us. I mean, the only thing they're looking out is for themselves. You know, uh, obviously the ET craft do exist. Something had to build them, so there must be aliens. So there's really two phases to the project going on there. It's understanding what we're looking at, and then once we understand it, is can we duplicate it with earthly materials and earthly technology? And, you know, unless we've got a handle on both of them, all that technology is useless to us. And if it turns out we can't do that, all we have is one single prized possession that we have to take care of. I didn't even believe in flying saucers up until I was employed at S4. I believe if I was given the opportunity again to go back in time and redo it, I think I pretty much would have just shut up and gone along with the program. Statistically, it's a certainty there are hugely advanced civilizations, intelligences, life forms out there. I believe they're so advanced that they're even doing interstellar travel. I believe it's possible they came here. Nothing that I have seen personally has a signature, has those characteristics which you would attribute to uh, other forms of intelligence or other kinds of craft. We do see that. Okay. That's uh, looking out in front of the orbiter. Okay, we're seeing three or four objects. Uh, can, you, can you confirm that it's just the one that's actually moving? The other ones are just reflect reflections. No, there are, uh, there are three objects. An object which is at the same place all the time, but appears to be tumbling. Well, we've always had it ever since yesterday. It just seems to be tagging along with us. Just uh, pass off the nose again. Right now it's at about 12.30 and it's uh, passing out in front of the vehicle. We're Tally Ho. Can you get a uh, still imagery if you can and any estimate on size or range? Seven, go ahead. I'll call you at 10 o'clock high. This is Houston. Say again, seven. We'll call you at 10 o'clock high. It's like we got an object right in front of you, Mark. Can you look out there? saucer, lenticular, 
But if you're going to be going in and out of atmospheres like Earth or other places might have, you certainly need a little more aerodynamic type of vehicle. And the saucer has the capability of going through the air at tremendous rates of speed and handling the bow and trailing wave without making shock waves. So it can be very silent while traveling at big rates of speed through the atmosphere. Yes, they were flying quite high. How high we couldn't tell because we couldn't get anywhere near their altitude. But they were either very large craft way up or smaller craft still well above what we could get to. A little saucer came from, uh, I say little saucer, it was a saucer, came flying over their heads, put down three little landing gear and landed right out on the dry lake bed. And they picked up their cameras and started over toward it, filming as they went. And when they got in fairly close to it, it lifted up, put the gear back in the wheel wells, tipped up and took off at a great rate of speed. And so they brought the came into my office and told me what had happened, and I sent him over to develop the film, and then had to go through the, all the proper regulations of reporting this, and, and we wound up having to send the film forward to Washington in the uh, base jet airplane, and uh, I don't know whether anyone's ever seen it since. We have an unidentified flying object. Uh, the subject of UFOs in particular has been relegated to tabloid journalism in the era, arena of science fiction. Mm -hmm. uh, why is it, do you suppose, that, or do you believe that it's been given a fair shake by science, and if not, why not? No, it hasn't, because it's, uh, it's rather clear there's been uh, a lot of misinformation, disinformation. There's been a very active effort on the part of uh, presumably people in the know to uh, discourage uh, public participation, media participation, to discredit the whole whole area. And that seems to have been true for at least 50 years. And also, the uh, very existence of uh, an extraterrestrial presence, or an extraterrestrial existence even, uh, went against the conventional science of 30, 40 years ago. Uh, even when I went to the moon, almost 30 years ago now. It was the conventional wisdom, both in science and theology, that we were alone in the universe. And um, I don't think people really believe that anymore, but uh, that was a conventional wisdom. And the UFO reports have been going on for at least 20 years before that, and, and some, or almost 30 years before that. And <clears throat> being denied, and uh, swept under the rug, and covered up, and filled with disinformation. There's been quite a few, there's quite a bit of contact going on. We have been visited, the Roswell crash was real, and a uh, number, number of other contacts have been real and ongoing. Uh, it's pretty well known to for, for, for those of us who have um, been briefed and have been close to the subject matter.
I think the public is ready to know if anyone has visited us. They can accept that and they want it.